Hello YouTube and welcome back. JJ Merrill here. This is yet another installment of my Dota 2 Starter Strategy Series, where I attempt to show you good heroes to start the game with and effective strategies for playing them properly. Today, I'm going to be going over, in my opinion, one of the most underrated heroes of the game, Omni Knight. I've yet to lose a game with this character. I'm not going to tell you how many games I've played with this character, but uh, I haven't lost a game with him yet. So that must mean he's, he's uh, good for something, right? Anyway, Omni Knight, extremely strong strength-based support and a very good pick in a lot of public game situations because you know as well as I do that people like to lock in about three or four carries. Your lanes fail. The carries get fed. What are you going to do? You should play Omni Knight. And I'm going to make this video to show you some concepts as to why he's a very effective champion at stopping hard carries, keeping your team alive, generally being a good guy. And he does so many different things. He has a lot of utility. Now, um, it's in my humble opinion that this character is undervalued in a lot of aspects, and I am really surprised he does not get more play. And I'd like to hear your feedback in the comments regarding this, why you feel that may be the case. At the time of recording this video, um, Omni Knight is not very popular at all, but he is definitely one of my uh, try-hard picks whenever I really want to play a good support. And yeah, the guy just uh, gave us a 15% battle point increase. I should always... Uh, Recommend to say thank you in the chat. Be a good guy. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about our compositions here, and then I want to go ahead and get into Omni Knight's skills, his strengths and his weaknesses, and we'll talk about some gameplay. So, up here in the top top lane, we have both uh, Spirit Breaker and myself against a Venomancer and a Pugna. Uh, you'll see that Spirit Breaker and Omni Knight are a very strong combo, despite uh, us both being melee. This lane works out quite well for us. We have a Kunkka up against a Zeus in the mid lane. Kind of an odd setup, but uh, the strangest part of this is we have a Vengeful Spirit soloing the bot lane against possibly a uh, Life Stealer, and it looks like that uh, Furion is going to be jungling. So a uh, solo Vengeful Spirit is definitely a very odd choice here. Oh yeah, we also have a, uh, a Dark Seer in our jungle as well. So, uh, composition looks okay. Uh, Spirit Breaker and Kunkka are definitely going to be our carries here. And I'm going to be playing the role of a hard support, and Vengeful Spirit is going to be uh, doing a support role as well, but given that she's in the solo lane, not as much. Um, I'm actually going to rewind the video a bit because I want you guys to see this move that this Pugna did that uh, actually really, really impressed me. And this will be a good segue into talking about some general supporting things and uh, talking about Omni Knight himself. So, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to stack and pull the creep, creep cam, but look what this Pugna does. He throws a ward right there as soon as I make the pull. This was a really, really good move by him. And then he's going to go down here. I imagine he's going to ward right here to keep an eye on the rune spot. The reason this is such a good move, um, if you guys aren't aware and you're still fairly new to the game, is whenever you ward this camp, it prevents the creep camp from getting stacked. Essentially what this means is that I cannot then pull the camp into our creep wave and effectively deny them experience and goal by letting the creeps kill our creeps. So, really good move by the Pugna right there, and I immediately realize what he's done, and I think, okay, we're going up, up against people that, well, they at least have some idea what they're doing. So, uh, a major respect there, and if you ever happen to watch this video, Pugna, nice job, man. That's good. You're playing a good support. All right, so uh, at this moment, I'm actually kind of useless. <laughs> so, uh, not a lot is probably going to happen for a while. So, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Omni Knight skills, uh, item build, all that good stuff. And uh, by the way, I tried this a few times during this game, by the way, guys. You can pull from this camp, but uh, I'm an idiot, and I don't have much experience doing this, and I pull it at all the wrong times. So uh, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen. But yes, you can pull uh, this camp into your wave on the dire side. You cannot do this on the radiant side because it simply uh, does not exist. So that's a good thing to do. Uh, you know, actually, I may take that back. I, I don't... I don't believe you could pull this camp. It's way too far away from the creep wave. I mean, you could do like a fancy double pull where you pull the creeps here, then those pull the... Okay, we're not. We're going to stop talking about that. Anyway, a little bit more about Omni Knight. Uh, Omni Knight's skills, his first skill is Purification. This is a really good skill. It is a single target heal, but what's also nice about this is that it does damage in an AoE around your target and pure damage. You're going to see as this game goes on the, the insane amount of damage this can actually do while also keeping your teammates alive. Repel is effectively a castable Black King bar. That's right, you could cast a BKB effect 
on uh, an ally or an enemy if the need presents itself. Really, really good ability. As you level it up, the duration increases. This ability I typically level up last. I'm going to max this one last. Uh, picking up the six seconds in it is uh, generally pretty good. At level 4, it scales up to 12 seconds, which is quite long, but you're generally not going to need this throughout the early and mid phases of the game, so I like to leave this at level 1 for quite some time. Degen Aura, this is a really good ability as well. Essentially what this does is within a uh, fairly small but considerable AoE around Omni Knight, it's going to provide a movement and attack speed slow. So if you get up on a target, odds are they're not going to be able to run away from you. This is a really good ability for making sure you keep a target slowed so that your allies can come in and uh, clean up the mess. I really like this ability. Guardian Angel is Omni Knight's ultimate. This ability is kind of tricky to use, and uh, you're going to see throughout this video that I make a very bad use of this, and I'll explain why I do and how you can make better use of it so you don't repeat the same mistakes that I do. What this does, this gives you an insane amount of armor to both yourself and allies within a 600 radius, so uh, take that DGNR radius and double that. That's the radius in which your AoE is going to cast. Not that large, uh, decent, but still not that huge. Um, it's also going to give you a pretty good amount of flat health regen per second, which is quite good. But the real strength of this ability is the armor that it gives you. So, uh, Spirit Break is charging in, and uh, I want you to notice how much my heal did in terms of damage to the target. Pugna just took 180 pure damage, and I healed the Spirit Breaker for the same amount. All I had to do was wait for Spirit Breaker to charge in, heal him, it, it boosts him up, and it tears Pugna apart. This ability is insanely good, and we should be able to score some nice kills with this and do some really, really good damage. Now, uh, to finish up my conversation I was trying to have about Guardian Angel here... Uh, Good ability. Tough to use, though. It gives you, I think, uh, some absurd amount of armor, like a thousand armor. Basically, you're immune to physical damage. This is why I mentioned earlier that this ability is extremely good and, uh, you know, fairly lower skilled public games because you're probably going to be facing, you know, two or three carries and all that good stuff. So, good ability, but uh, I actually don't like to level this up till about level 9 or 10 because before that point, you're generally not going to get into big team fights where this ability is going to be useful. Omni Knight is definitely a character where uh, your skill build can vary. I want to see about any character in the game, guys. You know, if if you're watching these videos and trying to learn the game, I, I do want to emphasize that you should never just stick to one skill build. I know I, I've emphasized that in previous videos, but I want to emphasize it again. Always make sure you're varying your skill builds depending on the needs of the situation. However, uh, purification should be maxed first. There's probably no exception to that whatsoever. I do decide to pick up a level of Repel at level 4. I do this because I feel like uh, Venomancer's Gale is slow is going to be a real hassle. And I also might be able to do some interesting things with Pugna not being able to cast Decrepify. So this might be a case where I actually want to cast Repel on an enemy target. Reason being is because if Spirit Breaker gets up on Pugna, I want to be able to... Uh, anyway, I'm going to go and heal him. And look, I took away almost half of Venomancer's health. I'm getting up on Venomancer, so the Degenar is keeping him slowed. He's not going to be able to run away from this. And that's going to be a first blood. All right. All right, I, I like hearing the first bloodline, so I took a little bit of break from talking there for a second. So, the combination of my movement speed slow and Spirit Breaker's empowering haste keeping me faster was an extremely deadly combination there and got us a first blood. Very, very nice kill and good work by the Spirit Breaker. So again, uh, to wrap up what I was saying about uh, Repel, you can use this in some fairly clever ways. Let's say Spirit Breaker gets up on the Pugna, and Pugna wants to decrepify himself so he can't be attacked. Well, if I repel him, he's not going to be able to do this. So that's really something to keep in mind. And you can use this in a lot of different ways. This character is not as straightforward as some of the other characters I might go over in my starter strategy series. But I feel like he's accessible enough that uh, newer players should give him a try. And not only that, but if you're learning the game... I really, really, really emphasize that you should try to get strong at support roles before you try to do anything else. Start with supports, then go into things you know, like tanks, initiators, characters like that, semi-carries. Then, we know once you feel you have a fairly good grasp of the basic mechanics of the game and you can play supports well, start playing carries. You know, start playing guys like you know, uh, anti-mage, morphling guys like that. I know I made an anti-mage video already, but he's so uh, easy and fun to play that I felt like I had to make a video for him. All right, let's talk about items now. You might have noticed I picked up a very, very fast soul ring. This is an absolutely core item on Omni Knight. 
By the way, I know that Pugna's ward is going to be down by now, so I'm going to go and start stacking and pulling the camp. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with this, you can watch how I do this, and you'll understand uh, how the concept works. I want to pull it so the creeps are away by the uh, one-minute timer, so you can now see the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the camp is stacked. And just pay attention to the timers and how I go about doing this. So items. I get a very, very fast soul ring on Omni Knight, and uh, I completely butcher this pull. Why I did this, I cannot imagine. Again, I wish that voice chat would go through in these games. This is hideously wrong. You need to pull the creep wave directly up into your lane. I don't know why I did this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to take a break from talking about items for a second because I want to talk about what happens here. So Spirit Breaker is going around. We're coordinating this pretty well. He charges on the Venomancer, and I pop my Soul Ring for some mana. Pop the heal on the Spirit Breaker, and you can see that with this level 3 purification, that took almost half of Venomancer's HP. Deals pure damage. There's no way you're going to resist this damage. I, I, I feel like this ability is so insanely underrated that it's almost criminal. So Kunkka's coming up for a gank. I'm keeping an eye out for his initiation here. Okay, he's going to throw in his boat, and it's going to be a perfect landing on the Pugna. And I cast a heal right on Kunkka, and it gets me the kill. So it's unfortunate that uh, neither Kunkka nor Spirit Breaker got the kill, but uh, heal's just too good, man. Just too much damage. This heal is insanely good. All right, so our lane is definitely doing very well so far. We've got a really big advantage. So let's get back to the items. The reason I pick up a very fast Soul Ring on Omni Knight is because... I can consume 150 HP to gain 150 mana. Not to mention the 3 HP regeneration, 50% mana regen. Those are uh, good stats as well. But I, I take 150 HP to gain 150 mana. Basically what this means is I can cast Purification for free and gain more health than it costs the Soul Ring to actually cast. So notice I just use it again. So basically my mana is completely unaffected. This costs me nothing to cast. And I gain a net sum of about 120 health. Not to count, you know, the, the base region that I'm also getting as well. Really good item, guys. This should be the very first thing you pick up on Omni Knight. Uh, I have a hard time imagining a case where you wouldn't do this. You might have noticed at the start of this game that I actually pick up the Soul Ring recipe right in the base. Reason being is because you can finish the uh, Sobi Mask and the uh, Ring of Region right at the side shop. So that's why I go ahead and do this. So uh, they're coming up to stop this. I repel the Spirit Breaker because I'm hoping he's going to be able to charge in, but unfortunately uh, he loses line of sight. I wasn't able to keep line of sight for him there. But again, notice how I use repel. I cast on the Spirit Breaker. I wanted to do that so that whenever he charged in, he wasn't going to be slowed by Venomancer. He's going to be able to keep right on them and do all kinds of uh, death dealing and whatnot, like a carry should. So that was close, kind of unfortunate that uh, line of sight was lost, not a big deal though. We have a huge lane advantage and I have no reason to believe we're not going to keep that. Uh, the next items I want to pick up are wards, absolutely wards. So again I cast Repel to make sure he can't be slowed. Coming up on the uh, Venomancer, I go and cast Heal on myself, catch both Venomancer and a, a surprise Nature's Prophet in that that I did not even know that was there. And uh, Venomancer does blow his ultimate there as well, which is a pretty good win for us, so we don't have to worry about that for a little bit. And it looks like Spirit Breaker is uh, going to be... Yeah, he's going to be just fine. Go and switch back to my perspective. And it looks like what I'm doing now is... Um, I may actually just be going back to base to heal up. This actually may not be the correct decision. I feel like I have enough regeneration right now that I don't really have to be afraid of all that much, but it looks like that is what I'm doing. I'm also picking up a uh, Magic Wand this game. I feel like this might have just been kind of a, ref a reflexive decision by me. Uh, Magic Wand is a good item, but you got to consider, are you actually going to build up charges on this? And is it going to be worth your time? Granted, you know, the Pugna, he's going to be down here. He's going to be casting, you know, his uh, Nether Blast quite a bit just to clear the waves. They saw, I noticed he's been doing that so far. Uh, the Venomancer has not been terribly aggressive, so I'm really not going to gain a lot of charges off of his Gale. Now, let's say, for example, I was against, like, a uh, Bat Rider and he was casting a sticky napalm all over the place, then a magic wand would be a very obviously good choice. So again, another thing I want you guys to take away from these videos is think about the situations that you're in, you know, while you're making your skill and your item build. Always be thinking for yourself. Never follow some cookie cutter thing and try different things. So what I did here was I cast heal on our minion for the simple reason that I want to lower down the health of this push coming in. I want to stop this push. I'm really not as worried about getting all the last hits here. I just want to slow it down. 
Spirit Breaker charging in. I cast Repel on him again to make sure that the Gale's not going to slow him down. We managed to get a really easy kill on Nature's Prophet. Pugna decrepifies himself. This is going to be really, really close, but he does go down to one last hit from Spirit Breaker. So that was a very, very close situation. But again, notice how I used the Repel to make sure that the Spirit Breaker was not going to be impeded whenever his charge ended, and he's going to get in there, start beating the hell out of everybody. Alright, so I want, definitely want to go and do some damage to this tower. Looks like Spirit Breaker is going to cast his ultimate on Venomancer, but he actually doesn't get stunned, which was really weird. If he did, uh, I'm almost sure that would have been a kill, but uh, the Venomancer walks away scot-free, so I'm not sure if that was a bug or what might have happened there. Again, using the Soul Ring, getting some nice regen. Give me a boost of mana, cast the heal for free, very nice. At level 4, this does 360 healing and 360 pure damage in an AoE. God, this ability is good. I, I cannot emphasize how good this ability is, and one of the main reasons I enjoy playing this character so much. So what I should be doing right now, uh, this is long overdue, I should be using these wards that I picked up, and I should be warding the rune spot down here. Looks like I'm finally going to go ahead and do that. Uh, playing as a support, guys, warding should be your number one priority almost all the time. And I tell my teammates that there's an illusion rune down here as well. It uh, looks like they're going to try to push top again. And our Spirit Breaker does make kind of an awkward move here. He leaves the lane to charge down to bottom. Uh, it looks like to help him out. But this leaves me alone to defend the lane here. So I want to go and try to slow this down. I take a, a really scary amount of damage here. And it looks like I'm probably going to be able to get... Very close to getting away, but that was really silly by me. And by the way, I could have popped my wand and lived. So, definitely a bad move on my part. I got way too aggressive there in trying to stop the uh, push by walking right up to the wave and clearing it with my heal. So, uh, very silly. A uh, death that could have easily been avoided. The Dark Seer did a good job of trying to save me. I could have popped my wand and lived. So, not going to be a total loss, though. I did go down, but it looks like we might be able to get... Uh, Okay, that was really awkward. Neither of these guys uh, really kind of knew what the other was trying to do there, but uh, that's okay. We traded my life for Venomancer and Nature's Prophet, and it looks like that uh, Lifestealer died in the bottom lane as well, so perhaps a Spirit Breaker going down there wasn't totally in vain. So that works out okay. Going to go to the mid lane, you know, just get a little bit of farm, keep the wave pushed back, make sure I'm not going to be able to do anything. And I'm going to use my other ward, and it looks like I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to ward the other rune spot. These two spots should be warded at almost all times, uh, with no exceptions. They're, uh, if these two spots are not warded, odds are you're not doing your job as a support, or your game is going really badly, and the enemy team has such a presence that you can't feel safe coming down here to ward this. Uh, by the way, I do want to take a minute to talk about alternative spots. These spots are really, really easy to counter ward, and it, it's very predictable where these wards are going to be. So notice that the Radiant team has a ward right here. This is a pretty good spot, and actually I see this kind of underutilized. So spot right here is good. Uh, spot right here is also fairly good because it's going to grant you vision of the rune and give you pretty good vision of the river as well. As for down here... You can ward right here. That's still pretty obvious, but not quite as obvious as right here is a spot where it's always going to be. And um, my positioning is going to be a little off right here, but right here and right here are also good spots for wards. If you're going for some uh, offensive wards, some things you might think about is warding right here. Let me make sure nothing crazy is happening. No, I'm just farming up top. Uh, right here is a pretty good spot, just to make sure, like, say, if you're pushing down this tower, people aren't going to be able you know, to flank you from this end. Or right here on top of the spire is going to grant you excellent vision of this entire area because it's on the high ground. If you're pushing this tower, it's going to allow you to see enemies that might be hiding in the tree line right here. Uh, for offensive wards over here, keeping a ward, like, around this general area is also a good idea because if you're pushing in through here, this is high ground. You're not going to be able to see on top of these stairs unless you have a... Uh, allied unit up there or if you have a ward so just a quick warding guide and again as you play the game you're going to gain more experience with us you know kind of learn what to do for yourselves as well so trying to push down this tower a bit yet again uh spirit breaker going in on the pug now looks like this is probably going to be a kill here <laughs> that my heal nearly got the kill but my heal did uh, 360 pure damage to the Pugna, and Spirit Breaker got the last hit. So that was a perfect situation. I want to make sure that he gets the kills, if at all possible. Coming down here to try to help with this, uh, I'm bad, and I miss my uh, heal. But like, let's take a look at this. If I would have hit my heal, that would have taken Nature's Prophet down to right around 100 HP. 
That's huge. That is absolutely huge. Not only that, I may have actually been able to stay on him and actually get a kill off if he wouldn't, you know, have uh, sprouted and then teleported away. But yeah, super, super, super good ability. I'll, I'll stop talking about how much I love uh, purif purification and start talking about some other things now. Let's talk about, like, where my item progression could go from here. Uh, the number one item that I should be looking to get, excuse me, are uh, wards. <laughs> Again, as a support, you your intention is not to you know get farmed up and get items like uh, the carries on your team are. Your entire purpose in life is to make sure that everyone else in your team has an easy of time as, as possible. You keep them alive. You keep good vision on the map, and you know you, you call out when the runes respawn and things like that. You, you want to make sure that you're there to kind of be the. Uh, I don't want to say like the referee because that's not quite right, but you're there to make sure that life is easy for everyone else on your team. So it looks like uh, that was a really nice hold by the Spirit Breaker. It gets just far enough away from the Life Stealer. I'm going to be able to pop off a heal on him, and he's going to be just fine. Life Stealer's going to have to run away. So that was definitely a good play by the Spirit Breaker there. I really liked how he uses Ultimate to both kill the Zeus and get out of range of Life Stealer. So that was definitely very, very well done. As for, uh, again, actual items I can go for here, I like mana boots a lot on most supports. I I don't want to make it like I don't want to make it a point that mana boots are a standard on supports, but uh, at the time of recording this video, it's a really really standard thing to pick up uh, mana boots on characters like this. But this is by no means a uh, thing that you feel like you should have to do. I mean, like, let's, let's think of, like, some other ways that Omni Knight could use different boots. Maybe you want to go power treads if you want to go a bit, a bit tankier. Maybe you're, you've done well enough this game that you kind of want to go a more uh, semi carious role. I know that's kind of weird, but uh, it actually can be done in some ways. Maybe you want to go phase boots because you want to be able to catch up the targets to make sure that you're slow aura and you're going to be able to get heals off. Maybe your team doesn't have much uh, crowd control otherwise. Our team is actually uh, fairly decent on the crowd control. Like, it's... It's not, like, you know, overwhelming, but uh, Vengeful Spirit obviously has quite a bit with her stun and her swap. Uh, the Kunkka has X marks a spot along with his ultimate. Uh, Dark Steer has the vacuum. Uh, Spirit Breaker has bash. Yeah, we're doing all right. So Vengeful Spirit does swap the Venomancer a little bit too aggressive here, and I'm not going to be able to get back in and help out enough in time. I have to pop everything I have to really feel comfortable staying alive in that situation. So uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened there. I'm really not exactly sure what. I'm definitely getting in a bit too deep here. I cast Repel on myself just to make sure that I can't get slowed or nuked down anymore. And I'm just trying to hang back long enough to get off a couple more heals on myself to get back into this fight. Looks like that uh, Arkunka's definitely going in here. And he's taking a lot of damage. Good wand pop by him. At least that's what it looked like. And it looks like he's going to be just fine. Yeah, he does pop his wand, so good play by him there. That's probably what kept him alive during all that mess. And it uh, looks like only... The Vengeful Spirit died, so uh, I apologize. I wasn't able to uh, properly commentate uh, what all happened during that team fight. But to be totally honest with you, I don't think anybody's really entirely sure what happened there. A lot of stuff happened. Some swaps, some stuns, some slows, boats coming in, uh, tidal waves gushing all over the place, all that good stuff. So I'm going to pick up some more wards. Uh, I noticed my top ward has went down, so that means my bottom ward is going to go down fairly soon as well. So again, as a support, wards. You need to have wards all the time. Does the enemy have stealth heroes? You gotta get dust. You absolutely have to get dust. If they have something like a Ricky Maru or a Bounty Hunter, or even things like where uh, dust may not be immediately obvious that you need it, for example, an Invoker, you still need to have dust on you at all times. And not only that, you need to be sticking with your team pretty much all the time as well to make sure that if those heroes do come into play, you're going to be able to get that dust off. Pick up the haste rune. I mainly pick this up just so the enemy team can't pick it up. That's why I uh, acquired this. So Spirit Breaker is getting in a little deep down here. I'm going to come in and try to give him some backup. Looks like he's uh, going to be... Oh, that's close. I do manage to get a heal off. He's going to be fine. I throw off a repel to make sure that uh, Life Stealer cannot slow him again. And uh, by the way, if you're hasted, slows do not affect you. That's why Life Stealer is uh, slow. is not having any effect on me right now. So while I don't think the Spirit Breaker might have died... 
I think it was about 50-50 if I didn't show up. So the, this is the stuff you should be doing as a support. You need to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time. This is also why I am carrying two TP scrolls on me. Not that I wouldn't recommend doing this on most characters anyway, but I'm carrying two TPs on me at pretty much all times to make sure that if something does break out in any of these lanes, I can be there immediately and help out the team. Next items that I might go for as Omni Knight here. A uh, good standard is a mechanism. I feel like that would probably be a good pickup here. Um, a pipe would actually be a very smart pickup here. Reason being is, uh, look at all the magic damage they have. Um, you've got Zeus, got some heavy nukes there. You've got Venomancer's ultimate. You've got Pugna. Uh, <clears throat> Furion's ultimate can actually do a fairly deceiving amount of damage if he uses it correctly. So I think actually my next item here, um, in retrospect, should maybe have been a pipe. Uh, I, I say this too because our Pushing power here is not all that strong, and you may have noticed going throughout this game that we're kind of disjointed in how we're trying to push these towers down. So I want to make sure we can have some good, long, sustained uh, tower pushes. Getting a pipe is going to make sure that if we do get into a large team fight, we're not going to be limping away with all of us with, you know, a quarter life left, and we're not going to be able to push down a tower safely. Definitely some things to keep in mind. Mechanism is also going to help accomplish this purpose, but I feel like a pipe in this game is actually going to be able to keep all of us alive during that team fight better than a mechanism would. So, mechanism, kind of better for patching up after, uh, after fights and a little bit better against a team that's full of uh, physical DPS dealers. Pipe, better against magic dealers. That's just kind of a general rule of thumb. Nothing wrong with picking up both of those items, by the way. That's a very, very defensive setup, but it's uh, it's quite good. And it's uh, if you're playing a very hard support role, there's uh, nothing wrong with doing that. It's just, I feel like in most games that the damage type is going to be weighted, you know, towards one or the other. So let's actually see what's going on. I should be teleporting mid right now, which thankfully I do. <laughs> I was about to switch perspective here. So I, I'm not able to save the Vengeful Spirit. I think I could have there if my... Uh, my mouse clicks were a little bit smoother. I cast a repel on myself just to get away from this nightmare coming in towards me. And I make very, very poor use of my ultimate. I do want to take a minute and talk about this. So why was use of my ultimate bad? Well, reason being is uh, it only caught myself and our Dark Seer. Those are the only two people it caught in it. And uh, what is Lifestealer going to do when he sees that go down? He's just going to run away. So my ultimate use there was extremely poor and definitely a waste. I feel like that uh, nothing would have went different at all if I would not have casted that. So thankfully, I didn't bait anyone into their deaths, so I guess you could say it wasn't a uh, total failure. But yeah, definitely not a good use of Omni Knight's ultimate there. You want to use his ultimate whenever you get into situations where you know that the team is going to be completely locked into each other and neither side is going to get away from it. A good way to kind of emphasize this is, like, let's say that uh, uh, Dark Seer's in the fight. He's thrown down his vacuum. Our entire team is on top of these guys. Another good example of this is, say, like, I'm on top of all of them, or at least, you know, at least two or three of them. I have my Degenera running, and they're not going to be able to get away. Or let's say we had Venomancer in our team. Maybe, excuse me, he gets off a really good Gale and an Ultimate, and our team is chasing them down. Maybe you want to cast the Guardian Angel to make sure they have absolutely no chance of fighting back and can do pretty much no damage to you. So just some ideas for how to properly use his ultimate and do not use it like I just did because that was pretty bad. You don't want to be doing that. So while our uh, our team composition here is a little weird, it can definitely work. I feel like uh, we're doing a very poor job at coordinating uh, tower pushes. Really good <coughs> Really good swap by the Vengeful Spirit there. The uh, Venomancer made a huge mistake. If a Vengeful Spirit is in lane like that and you're solo, which Venomancer was, don't do that. That's a massive mistake. Uh, Vengeful Spirit's swap is actually pretty far. She can grab you from quite a distance. So uh, I definitely want to go and try to uh, pressure this mid tower. There's no reason to make the game, uh, you know, uh, really drag on. And if memory serves from this match, this game does last a little bit longer than it really needed to. So again, I hope I can find you know some good topics to talk about and uh, teach you guys about how to play a good support. So I'm going to throw down an offensive ward here. 
I'm doing this because I really feel like we're in a strong position to take a tower. But look at how scattered out everyone is all over the map. We should be grouping up right now. We have a massive advantage. There's no reason why we should not be grouping up and trying to really take down, you know, some buildings. Actually trying to get to the throne and take it down. And, and notice how I use my heal to set up a nice uh, AoE for the Kunkka to get to grab a ton of last hits. Little things like that can definitely help. Uh, Spirit Breaker is going all kinds of nuts over here. Does get a kill off on the Nature's Prophet. He's uh, level 18 already, so uh, he's definitely doing very well. Let's take a second real quick and let's look at the golden XP graphs and see how we're doing there. So if we look at the XP graph, obviously extremely far in our favor. The primary reason for this is pretty obvious. It's because we've gotten so many kills. Getting hero kills nets you a ton of experience. So that is definitely not unexpected. Gold graph, looking pretty similar. Again, we've got a lot of kills. This is going to throw the gold graph heavily in our favor. If we take a look at the uh, gold per minutes, uh, the Radiant team is looking really, really bad on all fronts, which is kind of unfortunate for them. Um, ours is looking okay, not uh, all that terribly great from anybody. Uh, Spirit Breaker is doing fine, but again, we're running around the map so much, and we're so disorganized right now that you know it's. I feel like we could be doing a lot better than we are, and there, there's no reason to drag the game out like this. So again, still kind of trying to pressure the mid lane. Not a lot going on. You can see that I am going for a mechanism here. Again, this may not have been the best item choice. In retrospect, looking back at the game, I don't think it's going to be a terrible mistake either way, but I think there are better choices that I could have made there. Okay, still pushing down this lane here. I don't think a whole lot's going to happen here for a minute, so we can uh, talk about some other things. Uh, possible item choices after I get the mechanism, too, is, you know, uh, not just going like a super defensive sort of like buying a pipe, but uh, maybe I want to do something like. If the game goes on long enough, picking up items on Omni Knight like a Shiva's Guard is fairly good. Getting in there uh, gives you a ton of armor, and the AoE on it is quite good as well. So uh, something actually is happening here. He gets off a, a pretty damn good boat. I cast Repel to make sure that no more nukes are going to be able to affect him. Looks like Zeus is going to go down here, and uh, our Spirit Breaker is probably going to charge in here about any time. <laughs> but it looks like we're doing just fine without him so far. Really nice vacuum by the Darks here going down. It's going to guarantee a kill on the Life Stealer, so that was very well done. And here comes Spirit Breaker. He's going to go ahead and mop things up. This is kind of funny, too. Notice he got stuck in the trees, but uh, he's going to be okay. So, kind of a really weird team fight. But again, uh, Kunkka got off a really nice boat there in combination with my Repel to make sure that he couldn't be nuked down. It made sure that he was going to be able to stay alive and start doing damage after the boat hit. And uh, uh, his, his boat actually has a few interesting effects to it. Like, um, the uh, <laughs> I really like how the delayed reaction to damage on allies works. There's quite a bit of damage, too, to any enemies that it hits. But uh, anyway, this isn't a Kunkka video. It's a... Omni Knight video. So we're trying to push this middle tower down. Uh, Spirit Breaker makes a mistake here. I don't. I feel like that it's it's okay that he went down to push this tower, but look what he's doing now. He's just running away. We could have pushed this tower down. I really feel like we had a good chance of getting this. Or in any case, uh, we probably would have forced another team fight, which would have been a little iffy for us. But yeah, this tower should really not be standing right now. One of these two towers should not be standing. I think that's really the point that I'm trying to make here. So again, we're dragging out this game unnecessarily long. Cast my Repel. Make sure I can't be slowed by the Life Stealer. Wait for his Rage to wear off. Uh, we have possibly a team fight ruin here. Looks like our Spirit Breaker is going for Oshan. Which is perfectly fine. Clearing out all this wave. Not going to be a problem. Talk a little bit more about the items you can get on Omni Knight. Let's say, again, I'm kind of going up against a, uh, <laughs> I actually haven't done this yet, but I've seen players that have done it. Necronomicon on Omni Knight is actually uh, quite good. Uh, I'll go and uh, talk a minute away. Uh, looks like that, uh, unfortunately, the Pugna does disconnect and the game gets paused. Let me fast forward a bit here, just to make sure I don't waste time. Okay, good. So, Spirit Breaker does pick up Rashawn. Alright, so uh, Necronomicon, I have seen some Omni Knight players get this. 
Just go and take a look at that, and I'll explain why it's kind of a neat idea. Gives you intelligence and strength, both of which are very good stats on Omni Knight. And not only that, but the summons have some really interesting abilities. If you're going up against a stealth lineup, uh, one of the summons has true sight on them, which is really, really cool. Uh... I might talk about that a bit more at a later time in a different video, perhaps where I actually pick up the item. So, an uh, item like Necronomicon is good. Uh, try it out sometime. Unfortunately, this Dar Darks here and I do not get here in time to help this out, so that was kind of a shame. I do throw down my ultimate. Again, this was a waste. The enemy team is just going to simply run away. So, this was really bad on our part. We were not able to get there in time to assist the Kunkka and the Vengeful Spirit, and they died as a result of that. So that kind of sucks. I waste my ultimate yet again. Definitely not the best play that I could be exhibiting right here so far. But again, uh, the point of making these videos is not to <coughs> show a game where everything goes perfectly, but rather a game where some things go right and some things go wrong and to explain how I think things could have went better. So uh, waste of his ultimate. Uh, cooldown actually is relatively long. But that's okay. We're far enough ahead in this game that I don't think it's going to be a big deal either way. I, uh, I do hope that we do get in some more fairly, you know, interesting team fights so it's not completely dull to watch. I do uh, finish my mechanism. If you guys aren't familiar with this item, uh, it gives a uh, passive plus 5 all attributes and plus 5 armor to you and some uh, bonus HP regen. So very good item, very good tanky item. And it's active is really what makes it shine. An instant 250 HP and plus 2 armor in an area. And it's a uh, passive aura, it also gives you bonus HP regen and AoE, and uh, 4 HP regen all around you. Extremely good core support item. There are very few games where picking this item up is a mistake, and definitely one of the best items on uh, on supports you can possibly buy. For some reason, Ventral Spirit has taken down Ancients, I'm really not sure why, but uh, that's okay. Looks like we are grouping up for a team fight here mid. If they make a serious mistake here, this could easily mean a Rax for us. So it looks like the, the Kunkka is going up pretty far. I'm going up way too far myself. Uh, this was a really, really big mistake on my part. But let's see how the rest of the team fight goes. Vacuum going down from the Dark Steer. Catches quite a few of them in his wall. Really nice play there. And it looks like the Life Stealer is going to go down as well. Uh, I actually do really like his move there. How he uh, ulted inside a creep and then bursted right back out. Looks like the Spirit Breaker is going to get away. Right now, this is going to be a 3-for-3 three three trade. That definitely could have went smoother. Uh, I made a huge mistake there by walking up on the hill like an idiot and just getting nuked down almost instantly. So that was really, really bad. Uh, I'm still going to publish this game to YouTube, but uh, again, I want to emphasize that I am not uh, by any means an incredibly skilled player yet, and I still have a lot to learn myself. So uh, these guys made an even worse mistake, though. They, uh, yeah. <laughs> Spirit Breaker is uh, pretty good against heroes like Life Stealer because he has a good chance to effectively uh, perma bash heroes like that. But uh, again, uh, my move of walking up on top of that hill was really, really bad. Uh, even if it was to you know kind of start the spark of a team fight, uh, it did not have to happen. You can see I was kind of thinking about buying Necronomicon there too. By the way, um, at this point of the game, just kind of screwing around a little bit. Still, really want to push this tower down. There is. Uh, no reason at all why the Spirit Breaker should be farming the jungle like this. He's level 23 now. Next highest level on the enemy team is level 17. These guys are going to hardly be able to touch him. He also, he has an assault, he is really, oh my god, he is really farmed right now. Yeah, so, uh, I want to get something done here, so I'm going to go ahead and start going bottom lane. I want to start pressuring this. I think the next item that I'm going to pick up here in this particular game... Uh, probably some more rewards, <laughs> even though at this point they're not going to be all that useful. Uh, I feel like Necronomicon actually might not be a bad choice because, truthfully, we really need more pushing power. And uh, summons are good for pushing. This is why heroes like uh, Broodmother, uh, Lycan, Nature's Prophet, this is why these guys are really, really good at uh, pushing lineups and why you see them quite frequently. So our pushing here is kind of, kind of bad, but that's okay. We're going to be able to take down this tower. And a good swap on the Life Stealer here. I do cast my ultimate this time. Uh, still not all that insanely good use of it, but uh, it's going to really shut down the Life Stealer. He's not going to be able to do much. I pop everything I absolutely have here to make sure that I keep everyone in good health, and it's definitely going to pay off. 
So what I want you guys to notice about that fight is even though that, yes, I did die, which sucks, I'm the only one that died in my team, and everyone else on the enemy team died. Pop my mechanism, pop my boots, I popped my wand, ultimate went down, heals went down, everything went down that I possibly could do, and we wiped the enemy team. I'd like to think that everything I did was a very good contributing factor to that. So, as a support, you need to you need to expect that you're going to die when you go into team fights. This is also why, uh, as a support, you don't need all the farm that enemy or enemy that <laughs> that your carries need. You don't really need items. You're able to contribute to team fights by your abilities alone. You know, my heal, my uh, my magic immunity, my AOE slow, my ultimate. The few items that I do have are helpful, sure, but where the characters like supports really shine is in their abilities. Let's take some examples of other supports. Like uh, Vengeful Spirit is often played as a support. If you take a look at her abilities, none of these are really item-based. Well, absolutely none of them are. Magic Missile, just a guaranteed stun. Wave of Terror, and uh, Armor Debuff. A uh, Vengeance Aura, gives a damage bonus to everyone on your team in an AoE. And then you have the Swap, to swap out an enemy hero. None of these abilities are, are item-based. None whatsoever. While if you have a carry, Spirit Breaker needs to have the items so he can get in and actually make these abilities count. Whenever he charges in on somebody, what's it going to matter if he does no damage? This is why he needs these items, to be able to get in there and really start raising some hell, get some kills, and win the game for us. Again, I apologize if this uh, information is obvious to some of you. I know it's going to be, but again, the purpose of this is to help newer players kind of get accustomed to the game. All right, all hell's breaking loose here. Looks like uh, Lifestealer wants no part of this fight, and he's actually going to totally run away. <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's funny. That's really funny. I uh, I didn't notice that during the game. <laughs> he just completely runs away. Oh, that poor guy. All right. Anyway, looks like we're finally going to be able to get some work done here. Middle Tower does go down. We are going to be able to uh, pretty easily take a barracks here. Should not be a problem. Okay. That was a custom courier, by the way, which we uh, mercilessly killed. All right, guys. Looks like this is going to be very, very close to uh, the end of the game here. I popped my Guardian Angel here because, honestly, I want the game to end. I, I, I want to be able to stay on the Ancient and just kill it. So, anyway, I hope you guys walk away from this video uh, taking away some good support tips. Again, if you're new to the game, play supports. Play characters like Omni Knight, Crystal Maiden, Witch Doctor, Lich, characters like that. Really, really important to learn how to play these characters well. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or uh, comments, post them in the comment section. I really appreciate any feedback you might have, good or bad. Let's take a quick look at the score screen here. Yeah, I like to think I did my job as a support. I made Spirit Breaker's life very, very, very easy. So, very good game on our part and a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.